We are going to have a fabulous show. Our guest is Rhonda and her son Jonathan from A Stitch in Time Embroidery Designs. And we're going to be showing an amazing uh, design that Jonathan created. And uh, it's just fantastic. But uh, before we get started, I wanted to announce that we have a giveaway at the end of this video. So to be eligible for that, just comment hashtag all brands in the comment section, either on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn or wherever you're watching, and you'll be eligible to win at the very end. Uh, I'll pick one lucky winner uh, for that. So good luck there. So without further ado, I'm going to bring in Rhonda and her son, Jonathan. Hey, guys. Hi, Hi. Barbara. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us uh, today. We really appreciate the invitation to be able to show this dragonfly design and being part of your live show. Oh my gosh. Well, we're so happy to have you. I'm so inspired about it. I saw it some time ago on social media. You're mm -hmm. very active on Facebook. Um, and uh, if you guys haven't followed Rhonda yet, she has um, some links in the description of this video where you can follow her. Uh, but what was, can we see the, the design that we're going to talk about? Today? Jonathan has it pinned on a board. It's on the wall right behind me, if you can look there. And then we have it pinned on this board to show up close. There you go. The wings are mylar. They actually stitch out with no trims. And they do take a little while to stitch out, but... The wings are not freestanding lace. They have to be held together with something. So they are, they do have two layers of mylar in it, but the body and the tail are all freestanding lace. Wow. They're like this. So um, it does have to be attached to something because the wings are not stiff. They're actually kind of soft. I have lots of wings here to show you guys in a little while, but it's really cool. He worked on this a long time to get it like that. And I think that um, sometimes people look at it and they're just a little intimidated and think, I can't do that. How can I do that? But it actually is pretty easy. So I'm excited today to show you guys how this goes together, how it stitches out, and that really anybody can do it with a little mylar and some black thread and <laughs> blue and green. It's really not hard. So that's what we wanted to show you guys today, to not be afraid of it. Yeah. And scared of it and we have one little announcement to make um originally this was only offered you had to have a nine and a half by 14 inch front uh, hoop or larger in order to stitch it out because of the size of the pieces the wings stitch out in a hoop by themselves and then the body and tail so you have three different hoopings to put it all together but this week, Jonathan and I have been working on making it fit in an 8 by 12 hoop also, which would open it up to so many more machines out there. So now it's on our website. You can get it um, where it stitches out with three different hoopings in a 9.5 by 14 hoop or six hoopings in an 8 by 12 hoop where you stitch out each piece individual, the wings one at a time and then the body and tail one at a time. But it, it opens it up. I see Pamela wants to know how long it takes. Um, in the nine and a half of 14 hoop, it is almost five hours to stitch out all three hooping. So I haven't timed the other one yet. We did do all the hoopings for the eight by 12 and I forgot to write that down. But um, it's one of those designs where you can set the machine and walk away because it takes a while to stitch out. Hey, Reen, I see Reen is in here. Um, Green is kind of responsible for us being in digitizing anyway. <laughs> because, Let's talk um, about that a little bit. How did you get started in all of this? How long have you been in embroidery? How did Jonathan get involved? Let us well, know. Jonathan grew up in my embroidery shop. I have had an embroidery shop since 19, I bought a machine in 1997, late 1997, learned how to use it, started a business in early 1998. On purpose. So I was not doing this fun stuff and I still don't do a lot of fun stuff. <laughs> I do a lot of logos and names on company uniforms. And about, 
I don't know how long, Reen, you're in here. Um, maybe you remember. It was probably about six or seven years ago. I really wanted to just get out of the business. I was tired of the heavy boxes and standing in front of the machines all day. And she said, you should learn how to digitize. You've been editing designs for years. And I bet you can pick it up without much problem. So I did. I got I upgraded my software to digitizing software, which I, I never had before. And took lessons and learned how to do it. And I thought, Jonathan has such an analytical mind. He's great at math and figuring out things, complicated things that I thought he would be really, really good at it. And um, it took me a few years after I started to talk him into it, but um, about three years ago, I think. I have no idea. I, <laughs> it's been a few years now. I um, talked him into trying. He said, just show me what the buttons in the program do, and I'm going to figure it out. And that's exactly what he did in the beginning, the first few months. And then um, we found online classes uh, from John Deere. He took every class John Deere offered, and he's doing stuff like that now. He's really, he's kind of was a natural at it. And um, I'm never going to be able to do things like that. <laughs> but he can, and I am forever grateful for that. So it's kind of interesting. I never know what he's going to be doing in here and what he's going to be creating. And it's, it's, um, it's a lot more fun now. So we're or about 50% it's digitizing and we still do uniforms. Um, also, mm -hmm. but we hope to be all the way, um, digitizing. Yeah. So everybody that's watching, if you yeah. aren't familiar with the stitch and time designs.com, please go over there and check them out. And we also have a coupon code that you can save 10% off of the designs that we talk about in the video today. Yeah. So Jonathan, and you are so talented. What was your inspiration for choosing this dragonfly? It's so unique. I, um, it was after I made the butterflies, I actually made a little realistic size dragonfly and I didn't really think much of it when I made it at all and when we were bringing one of our sewing machines in to get maintenance I brought a few with the butterflies and one of those little dragonflies over there just to give to them and the tech who works on our machines really liked the dragonfly and he showed me some of the things he makes he works with metal and he showed me some of the metal dragonfly sculptures that he made. One of them was this really large metal dragonfly he made for someone to put in their backyard. And on the way home, that actually reminded me of something that I knew but had never thought of in years, is that in Earth's distant past, the tens of millions of years before even the earliest dinosaur came about, Earth had giant insects on it, one of which was a relative of modern dragonflies. They were called griffinflies, technically. So I decided to try and make one of those species. So rather than call this a dragonfly, now it's modeled after a modern day dragonfly because no one actually knows exactly what griffinflies would have looked like. Other than that, they, other than that, visually, they were very similar to modern day dragonflies. So I decided to try and make this life size for one of those species, which would be Meganeura. If anyone wants to look that up, <laughs> the images they'll find would probably be much creepier. I took some creative <laughs> liberties here and made it a little, tried to make it a little cuter and more cartoonish so it'd be more likable. But um, I spent uh, quite a long time looking up pictures, trying to find really high resolution pictures of dragonflies to, to get some reference to make this with, along with several pieces of artwork. The mm -hmm. wings I actually made from an image on Wikipedia, which I think was the scan of a Meganeuro wing etched in stone, a fossilized wing. So Ooh. the body, I can't say for sure. The wings are as accurate as you can possibly get to the actual creature's wing. And they were a headache to make. <laughs> I love it. Judy says the detail is amazing. So we're going to kind of break mm -hmm. this down today, right, Rhonda? We're going to, we have a whole video where we can show it being stitched out. Now, we did have a, a 
a question earlier. And if y'all have questions, please write them in the comments and we'll try to answer them live. Um, they so one staff, but I see some of them. <laughs> Pamela asks, how long did the design take awesome design? Um, to stitch out, it is almost five hours to stitch out. Uh, that's all the hoopings. That's on the, when you're using the nine and a half by 14 hoop. I'm not really sure um, how long it takes for the, the smaller one. Um, when you use the eight by 12 hoop, the dragonfly is going to come out the same size as this mm -hmm. one. They're both the same size. We just split it up so you could use a smaller hoop to stitch it out. It's probably, I would guess, about the same amount of time, except you're, you know, hooping more. So that's going to take a little bit of yeah. time, but we sped it up today. I actually videoed the entire stitch out process. So you guys will get to see it. And it only takes 18 minutes through the magic of video. So, <laughs> so it's not going to be that long of a live, <laughs> just an hour today. Um, watch that. I have to so show you guys this because it looks like someone already stitched it out and says that it came out beautiful. So oh, that's great. Glad to see that. You post that in our group too, so everybody can see. And you may have already. I've I've seen lots of photographs of people that have already stitched it out in our group. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So should we go ahead and pull the video up? Absolutely. And you guys, if you have questions while the video is um running, please let us know. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and press play and we can talk about it and I'll be checking the comments too. Yeah, somebody wants to know the finished measurement of it. When it's all together, it is 26 inches wide and 17 inches tall. So okay. it's pretty big. Right now, um, we are stitching it out on the mesh type stabilizer, two layers of it. And it's stitching out a placement line for the mylar so that you know exactly where that mylar needs to be. And then we're going to place two layers of mylar to make it a little bit stronger on there and tape that down really good. And mylar is kind of slippery. Um, if you've ever worked with it, it's a little, it's, it's really slippery. We're using iridescent mylar and we want two layers of it to make it a little bit stronger. Um, I see Joyce wants to know why I reduced the speed down to 600. Um, you can probably stitch it at a faster speed. I don't know. I usually stitch out freestanding lace at a slower speed than I do other things. I don't know why. Do you know why? <laughs> um, if I had to say, some parts of it can be kind of can be kind of hard. You'll hear the machine sound a little louder, like it's having a bit harder of a time. But that's really just dependent on the design itself. I can't think of anywhere in the Dragonfly that sounds really hard, though. So I don't think anyone would have a problem with speeding with speeding it up. It up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes freestanding lace can be very stitch dense. So mm -hmm. I guess the safest thing to do is just to slow it down. It can. Rain said she stitched it around 800. Oh, good. Thanks, but, Rain. Um, honestly, it's really not that dense. You know, um, I was shocked. I stitched it out for the first time because he's been stitching it out for a year, you know, experimenting with it and things like that. And when we changed the hoop size and made it able to stitch out in a smaller hoop, I did all the stitching for that. And um I, I was surprised. Yeah. It stitches out really well. Yeah. Someone asked where you can get the Mylar. So all brands carry several different brands of Mylar. Um, so in the video uh, description shop product, underneath the video, there's a special link that goes to Rhonda's site where you can purchase the design and definitely use that coupon. But underneath that, there's different supplies that you can purchase from allbrands.com, including Mylar. And you will, when you stitch this out, like I said, it's not, it's not a stiff design where it's gonna, you know, stay really stiff and you can hang it on a wall just like that. I mean, you probably could if you tacked it up there like that, but I would suggest putting it on something. If you want to display it, um, we put it on a canvas thing. I, I don't know what size it is. I can't remember. I want to say it's 18 by 24 that we found at Hobby Lobby, but let me, I don't know if I, you can see, they can see me in this little thing here. I yeah, also I found this big metal thing at Hobby Lobby. It's like a big flower. 
Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. And I actually have it hanging on my front porch, but it is out of the weather. It's it's where it does not get full sun on this like that. So it's under my porch. It doesn't get full sun. I put it out there last June as a test to see how the weather and being outside. We're in Louisiana. It's hot. It's humid. The weather's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I wanted to see if this mylar would hold up out there. And it's been out there since June. It feels the same. I actually just have it tacked on this metal thing with, I used a needle and thread and slowly tacked it on there like this. And it's hanging on the brick wall um, yes. right outside my front door. But like I said, it's not exposed to rain or direct sun or anything. I do think that if you hung it in the direct sunlight, the mylar is going to deteriorate after a few months or so, more than likely. I did hang a small piece of just mylar on a wooden board on my deck out back where it got morning sun. And it only lasted, I want to say maybe three or four months before it, you know, kind of got crinkly and broke up a little bit. And it takes so long to stitch out, you don't want to stitch it out and do that. So if you have a place to hang it outside like that, and it's out of the, you know, the rain and the hot sun, it's beautiful outside. I have a lot of people stop at my front door and make comments. I have a rain camera right there so I can see it. They stop and look at it and um, really admire that it's really pretty outside like that because the sun does catch it in the morning, but it's not in the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't survive your Chicago weather. <laughs> <laughs> I think anywhere in the United States right now, it's a little bit chilly. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was, did we have a freeze this year, Barbara? I can't remember. Oh, we did have a freeze, right? Yes. Uh, well, some, the, the Southern, yeah, we did. We had a freeze. <laughs> I left it outside during that too. So what do you think about stitching on vinyl? The wings? Yeah. What do you think, Jonathan? What are these materials as vinyl? Um, does she mean like a marine vinyl? What kind of like a plastic? Like a maybe like a um like a, a clear, digital cutter style vinyl or something? A vinyl. Like something that you would use with a scan and cut, maybe? Maybe. I can I tell you this though. The wings do not work like applique. So there's no outline um for exactly where the wings stitch. And mm -hmm. the satin stitching on the edge of the wings is not very wide. He wanted them to look realistic. So if you stitch it on something that you can't tear away, then you're probably going to have a, you know, you, you'll be able to cut close to this, but not exactly on it without, um, yeah. you know. So if you use something besides mylar, the mylar, you'll see in a few minutes, we can tear that away. I, so, I'm pretty sure you could probably use organza. Like a, a metallic I did do organza. It. I did try it with organza. I oh, had really? some sparkly organza. It wasn't as pretty as the the mylar. Mm -hmm. The mylar kind of makes the wings look real. And mm -hmm. I just was able to cut around after it's completely finished. You have to cut as close as you can to the satin stitches. So um, it's not going to be as clean on the edges as using mylar is. But yeah, experiment with it and see what you guys can come up with if you can uh, stitch it on something else. Yeah. So we did have another question um, from April. She asked how many color changes are in the design? The wings have three. For the largest size, it has. Um, Do you remember? <laughs> I oh, have it's sorry, you stumped them. <laughs> if you're stitching out the two and one hoop, then you're going to have five color changes in the wings. If you're stitching out just one of them in in a hoop, then you're going to have three. The um, the color changes for the tail and the body. The tail you're going to stitch um, if you're doing it exactly like it's showing the instructions. You're going to stitch black, green, blue, black for the tail. And the body you're going to you're going to stitch the same color, but the eyes have a bunch of colors in them. I don't remember how many color changes that is off the top of my head. Yeah. So we'll have to 
Yeah, looking the, at instructions here. The eyes are really pretty. He's got quite a few colors in there. And so they're really pretty. I have the sheets printed out for the 8x12 because that's what I was working on the other day. And the body has 11 color changes. And the tail has four. four. And the wings have three color changes each. So not really bad. It's not like, you know, sometimes you get a design and there's like <laughs> 30 color changes. This is not the case. It's really not that bad. I, um... I can actually put a wing to stitch and go try to do something else without burning something in the kitchen. <laughs> I, have enough, yeah, I have enough leeway where I can run away for a few minutes. Just make sure you put a um, full bobbin on there before you get started. So see how easily the mylar tears away when you're done. There's going to be a, a few little pieces left on the edges. Just grab some tweezers and clean it all up like that we have another question real quick mm -hmm. um let's see it was what machine um is Rhonda using so on this one you were using uh, the brother dream machine yes which is now the brother stellaire mm -hmm. um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that machine but this is the nine and a half by 14 inch mm -hmm. embroidery area yes but we can stitch it out now in the 8 by 12 also. And if you go to our website, you'll see that. You'll see the choice of the 9.5 by 14 or the 8 by 12. And the only difference, it's no difference in the end result. It's just that the bigger hoop, only you only have to use three hoopings to stitch it out. And the smaller one, you use six. So after it's all done like that, you have to soak it in water to remove that water soluble stabilizer. And we like to soak them because uh, the wings are kind of delicate, but not as bad as I would have thought. And they tend to curl up. There's a lot of stitching in there. So we like to use weights to weight it down while it's drying so that they dry nice and flat. Y'all see my homemade weights there. I have washers <laughs> tied <laughs> into little bundles and that's what we use for weights. So this is the second hooping. Technically, the stitches out, you would have done the wings twice. You would do the set of left wings and then the set of right wings. And then you would move on to the head, body, and tail that stitches out all together like that. Yeah. No mylar is in that. You won't be able to see it even if you put it down because it's, you know, the stitching is solid on the body like that. So what type of stabilizer are you using here? It's that mesh type water soluble stabilizer. It kind of looks like a fabric. Mm -hmm. And we use two of those. And if you look on the edges of my hoop there, I have T pins in there. We learned um, a few years ago from a class online that we took that um, when you have a rectangle shaped hoop, the edges, the straight edges like that, those are the weakest points of the hoop. So if your stabilizer is going to loosen up in the hoop, it's going to be from the straight edges like this. These corners up here are really tight, but if it's going to get loose anywhere, this will be where it is. So I now put T-pins in the edges of my stabilizer and it stops it from pulling in at all. So it's a great tip when you're stitching out freestanding lace because you definitely don't want that moving around in there. You need it to stay all in place yeah. um, in order for it to stitch out right. I, I think so too, Reen. <laughs> I told Jonathan when we were talking about this on Tuesday, I was like, I envision this as an artistic um, display in a natural science museum. Like, it's just, it's art. It's beautiful. It kind of is. And someone in my group, um, said they could imagine it on the big hoop skirt dress. You know, oh, like I'm thinking cool. Mardi Gras, and that would be really cool. <laughs> oh yeah. Jonathan, we need you to make a whole lot more designs because we love this one. <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, a Mardi Gras ball and have the big dragonflies on your skirt like that, it would be really cool. Yeah. 
So someone asked earlier, uh, Mary asked about um, the machine that you use, the Dream Machine, mm -hmm. has a built-in camera. It's been replaced by the Stellaire, mm -hmm. which is actually uh, available on our website, allbrands.com. Um, and it has my design center, but it uses the camera of your uh, smart device, like either an iPad pad or your smartphone to take a photo of the fabric but other than that it works exactly the same as the dream machine yeah i've seen it several times it's a beautiful machine yeah Amazing. and you also have a ve 2200 which is the 8 by 12 hoop mm -hmm. um and then the replacement for that is the ve 2300 right yeah, I didn't even think about that when we made it fit in an 8x12 hoop the other day. I had to look it up online. I'm thinking, does my other machine use that size too? <laughs> but yeah, I could have it going on both now if I'm using the 8x12 and stitch out, you know, stitch yeah. it out that much faster. So, Jonathan, are these the standard colors for dragonflies or how did you choose the, is there a specific color we should use to be true to? Um. If you look up dragonfly colors, you will find every color imaginable. So <laughs> rather than say, I'm, I think I base the colors on this one off of a uh, southern hawker, if I'm remembering right. But since dragonflies come in every imaginable color, I just you can just go look outside, pick which one you think looks best, and try and make it, and <laughs> and you'd still be accurate. Oh my gosh. Yes, and I get to listen and see all those investigations he does when he makes things like that. <laughs> and uh, they do come in a lot of colors. I didn't even realize that until we took this out today, that he had stitched this one in mostly blue. And then the original one he stitched with the green like that. So you can really, you know, wow. do whatever colors you want. These are just the two dragonflies that we see around here the most. Oh, wow. Hey, we had a question earlier if we could see the butterflies. Should we do that now or wait? No, we can do that. Okay. So this is what got it all started. Jonathan brought this in and was this this was the beginning, right? Um, I can't remember what your first freestanding lace design was. Do you remember? Mm, I do not. <laughs> Yeah, he did these butterflies, I think, last summer. Oh, my. Um, and they're really pretty. I think, I know he's going to fuss if I get it wrong, but is this Blue Emperor Butterfly? Uh, that sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 these are all modeled after real butterflies also. Admittedly, the green one has a little more color than the real thing, though, as it seemed kind of plain. But can't see the middle of that one this was a paper kite butterfly yeah the butterflies are pretty cool aren't they robert Hello. you did a lot of butterflies summer. it seemed like a logical thing to do since butterflies are mostly flat anyway so stitching them out in an embroidery hoop seemed seemed sensible <laughs> and anything i do like this i generally try and get it as close to actual size as possible. I'm certainly not saying it's 100% accurate because it's hard to tell exactly how the thread's gonna compress in a hoop and compress and pull in the hoop, but uh -huh. they're as close as I can get them. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And we'll show another uh, project that you created a little later. Um, it's just amazing. Yeah, we have... Um the one that he created in October kind of went viral. Um, it turns out that freestanding lace is kind of his thing. You know, I think when we're, when we start digitizing, we kind of find out what we like to do and what's our special projects that we tend to lean toward. And um, I always imagined freestanding lace would be my thing, but it's definitely his. Yeah. So the butterflies, are they available to purchase on your website as well? Yes, they are. All right. So don't forget, guys, use this. Um, does this VIP work on the butterflies too? Yes. Over it works VIP. on um, the dragonfly designs and all of our freestanding lace designs that we're showing today. Um, yeah, the VIP coupon code does work on that. 
I see a few of them are mentioned in the tarantula too. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> We'll get to that one and just <laughs> <laughs> that one was kind of a crazy surprise for us both. It was very cool. Oh, look at this. Everyone's loving the butterflies. The butterflies yeah, the butterflies were really popular. I think that was last summer. We did the butterflies. Um, beautiful butterflies. Somebody wants to know if they can be stitched on cotton fabric. Um, freestanding lace, you, I have seen people stitch it on fabric, but freestanding lace actually makes like a fabric background. If you watch the tail stitch out in the body, you can see that there's an entire layer, like a, a tightly woven grid layer that stitches underneath both of them. And it, so it kind of creates its own fabric, which is why it is able to stand on its own when you wash away the stabilizer. So if you want to stitch it on cotton, you probably can just know that it's going to be more dense if you stitch it on top of fabric than a regular design that doesn't have that whole grid work underneath it like that, that whole foundation. So let's talk a little bit about sizing um, of the designs. This one shouldn't be sized up or down. It's specifically digitized for this size, correct? That would be right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at me. Look at those legs. <laughs> those are some nice legs. I don't know how he got all those little things to stay. I um, I don't know. I have messed around with freestanding lace trying to digitize it, and it is hard to digitize. So um, <laughs> you really have to have an understanding of how that all works in order to do it. But, yeah, you want to talk about why it shouldn't be resized a little bit? Um, we get that question a lot. I'll I'll try and explain this in the most understandable way possible is that in the programs you use to create embroidery designs, there are a number of tools you can use. So if I wanted to create just a square, I'd just draw a square and the program would fill in all the stitches for me. I wouldn't actually have to draw in each one of those stitches or I could, but if I'm using a tool that does it for me, then I can make that square larger or smaller, and that's just gonna change how many stitches are in it. If I choose to draw each and every line of thread myself using a different tool, I could create effects that the program cannot create on its own, more complicated effects such as the wings. Mm -hmm. But if it's resized, it doesn't actually change the amount of lines. So you, if you shrink it too much, you'd be compressing a bunch of a bunch of lines of thread right on top of each other, and that's what you'd get in the wings. If you try and size it down, since I drew each and every one of those lines, if you compress it, if you try and size it down by like fifty percent, the wings are just going to look like a solid mass of thread. All that detail is going to is going to disappear. The machine might have a very hard time doing it. You would cause a lot of problems. They probably get away with re resizing it just a little or. Yeah, it wouldn't be as stunning if it wasn't the size that it is. I think that it's so big is why it's so cool. It's beautiful. And, and he does plan on um, doing smaller sizes, but it really took him a long time to do all that. So He's kind of taking a break in between. <laughs> yeah. And the price of it is fantastic on your website for what it is. Oh, my goodness. You. We yeah. did, you know, the whole time he was working on that and I was watching him test it and trying to imagine what it would look like all together. I kept searching on the, on the internet to see if anybody had, if I could find something similar, you know, and I really couldn't. So right as of right now, I can't find another one like that. So mm -hmm. it's pretty unique. And I'm proud of them for um, sticking through it. I don't know if I could have worked on something that long. <laughs> well, that's what being an artist is all about. So yeah, It is. And he has a lot of patience. Yeah, for, that's um, required. So which part of the design are we at now? Um, uh, I'll start the play button, if that's yeah. okay. We're at the body, so we have the tail and the body, and they stitch out separately because obviously 17 inches long is just too long for any hoop on an embroidery machine. Um, so it stitches out separately. We're going to do the same thing with that 
as we did with the wings. And we're going to soak it in water, let all that stuff dissolve. I'm surprised um, it has not made a difference in my plumbing yet because I did <laughs> Just dump that down the sink and run hot water behind it. And so far, it's, it's been fine. Because we, we go through a lot of mesh stabilizer in here like that with him testing designs all the time. And I'm just trimming away any little trims. You know how sometimes when the machine trims, it leaves those two little things on the back side. So I'll trim all that away, rinse it out, let it dry. And Jonathan is going to show us how it goes together. Oh, we're going to have to talk for about five more minutes because I forgot to turn the glue gun on. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have to give it a few minutes to heat up. And he will show us how it goes together, how easy it is to put together. Once you have it all stitched out, it's easy to go together. So okay. do you want to um, talk about the tarantula for a few minutes? Yeah, that'd be great. Right. Where? Where's one? I gotta put my yeah. He has them right there. Tarantulas over here. Um, I'm not sure what would be the best way for me to show these on camera. <laughs> Gorgeous! Oh my gosh, it looks real. If I would turn around and see that, I might think it's a real tarantula. Yeah, the legs bend. So, um, can you guys see the legs like that? So we had a lot of interest in this. Uh, you know, he put a lot of work into this little spider too. And um, the day we were going to put it online, he said, I don't know, mom. Um, I can't see that anybody would want a spider, but I just wanted to see if I could do it. If I could create a, a tarantula design that looked sort of realistic. And he worked on this for weeks. And did it, and I said, well, let's put it online and see. So it was like 9 or 10 o'clock at night when I put this on our website. This was the first one he did. And um, my phone started jinging because I have a Shopify website, so it makes that little cash register sound <laughs> every time. And it was late at night, and it started making that sound. And I looked, and it was some ladies in Denmark. <laughs> we're buying the spider and that kind of went on all night until the next morning and it was the weirdest thing because I don't know if it was because we released it in October and it was Halloween or it was just a cool thing we got so many great compliments from it that they had never seen anything like it in freestanding lace and I know that a lot of people got upset because our Facebook group blew up it, every day. It was just photographs of tarantulas. They were scaring <laughs> family members with them and just doing all kinds of pranks. Just, and, yeah. just for the record, I didn't make this to <laughs> play pranks with. It is now, a beautiful what people breed. do with it is entirely up to them. But just so everyone knows that my intention was not to scare people with this it was actually to put it in like little bug collection type thing because i figured i'd make more bugs and make a little collection of them so my my intentions for this were not nefarious in nature <laughs> yeah. so everybody funny. really had a fun time with it and you know what i think i was happiest to see with this is we had so many compliments uh people commenting women saying my husband finally came. He's finally interested in my embroidery machine. He wants to make spiders, you know. So we got a lot of guys in our group with that. Uh, Denise, they just bend. He has so many threads that go back and forth as the legs are stitching. When you stitch it out, you'll see that. It goes back and forth, back and forth. So it kind of builds up the legs. And after you rinse it out, um, it works either way. You can bend them when it's still wet. You can bend them when they're dry. And they actually stay like that. So, um, and it's not really a hard stitch at all. You would think it would be a hard stitch, but uh, his crazy idea <laughs> worked out. The, the legs are actually done in the same way you'd really see any other freestanding lace of that sort. The fact that they can bend and just stay there and I actually find that they are much, much easier to pose after it's already dry. Mm -hmm. That was more or less just 
that really wasn't on purpose. It was just a happy accident, really. Now that I know you can do things like this, anything I make in the future, I'm going to do it on purpose now. But it, <laughs> it was not on purpose for this tarantula. It was just, it was just dumb luck, really. But it worked out great. So um, I saw somebody ask what bobbin weight. We use pre-wound bobbins, and I want to say there's 60 weight, I think, that we used in there. And we just used black um, underneath like that because, I mean. Yeah. So I, any embroidery always use a 60 weight bobbin and a size 11 needle. That's yeah, what, that's what we not, use for, for everything. We um, hardly ever, I, I can't even tell you the last time I used a different size needle in uh in my embroidery machine but this is the second tarantula he came out with just a new species but um people took this one and they did something really interesting with it they um turned it into a christmas spider they started stitching it out in red and um green and white and someone told us the story of the christmas spider and i want to say in germany the first I think that's what they said. If somebody in here is from Germany, please let us know. Um, I read it a few times and now I can't remember, but um, they said the first thing to go in their tree is a spider because of the Christmas spider story that a spider uh, spun a web all around the tree and then in the morning it turned to tinsel. So the lady had um, that was poor had her tree all sparkly from the spider webs like that. I love that warm, cozy feeling that the spider a great story to tell. I think <laughs> Donna wants to know if the smaller hoop size dragonfly. Yes, it's on our web page now. So you can either pick the nine and a half by 14 or the eight by 12. So you can get either one. Yeah. So please use the code Allbrands VIP when you purchase it on Rhonda's website, a stitch in time designs.com. Yes. Let me check this. Um, glue gun and see if it's hot i bought jonathan a glue gun that is um well, uh cordless we love it <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have good tools that's for sure it is yep it's ready jonathan so you can move over here and show them i'll switch the camera hey linda rayburn <laughs> good to see you here all right, I'm going to switch this to the cutting table, and he's going to show you guys how quick this goes together. All right, so grab this, and let me see if I can get the camera to focus well enough. Uh, if you can see it, this little green line here, if I can... Is there the camera go. focused? We yeah, yeah, we can see it well. Uh-huh. This little green line here shows you how far the body should be positioned over the tail to where the body just barely eclipses that green line so you can't see it anymore. So that gives you your exact position that the which was great that the you don't have to tail guess. and body connect with. This is so, so cool. let's just Anybody can put it together with those placement lines. And we're going to take this and just sort of pull it over a little bit and just press that down real easy. And just leave that for just leave that for like 20 seconds or so. Let me I usually put the bottom wings on first, so that would be the ones that are thicker and slightly shorter. The bottom wings are wider than the top wings. Right, and you can also see, I can't actually tell if the camera's focused. Oh yeah, we can see those, those yeah, lines. Yeah, focused enough. You can see these light colored white lines form the exact shape of the edge of the wing here, so that tells you exactly where it belongs in the exact angle to where the satin edge goes right on top of those white lines. So we're just going to put a, let me see about where this belongs. Give myself a little dev glue here. 
If I don't have a hot glue gun, do you think I could sew it with my sewing machine? Maybe. I, I hand stitched the first one together. Okay. And it was a little tedious, but that works also. The hot glue will also melt through this mylar really quick, so try try not to burn your fingers with it. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> well, we, uh, Let us know if you guys have had hot glue gun. Uh, we have all you. burned our fingers with hot glue. <laughs> I well, I was a little girl, and I decided I was playing with it in my mom's sewing room, and um, <laughs> I touched all five fingers together. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. It smarted. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it did. Yeah, I told him I like, I, I tell him all the time, he kind of dummy proofs designs for me. You know? <laughs> oh, Makes it to where you really mm -hmm. can't mess it up. Move that. Mm -hmm. All right, and the top wings are going to go on just the same. And if you look at the angle, it might actually seem a little weird because they actually really angle up like this. Um, that is just because dragonfly wings don't do that. But if you look up Meganera, you'll find that the depictions of it usually have its wings on that odd angle. So. I did that since that's what it's actually supposed to be, rather than have the wings more straight out like modern modern day dragonflies. Carolyn had a really good suggestion to use the like fingertips, like the silicone, I guess. Thank you for letting this clueless person know that, Caroline. Now I, I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline's one of our shopping buddies in the group. You know, yeah, we, we all have to buy the same things. <laughs> Judy said that she can't wait to make one. Well, and I'd love to so make it when, it's done. when when we purchase it with the coupon and get it all done, give um give um a hashtag to allbrands.com but also where should they tag it or post it for you Rhonda? in our group you can post it in our group um i'm not sure my business page is set up to where they can um do that there but i can um take the photograph that they post in the group and post it on our business page but we have a lot of these um stitched out in my group that people have posted photographs of and what they're doing with them very cool. Are we... You know, this mylar I noticed really messes with the camera. Oh, funny. It does. Oh, funny. I was messing with it the other day, and I guess it's just all the shininess. Oh, I bet. That's funny. Up. Nope. We can hold it up in front of the other camera. <laughs> and that's the only thing I can figure out that's making it do that, maybe to have it that shiny, you know? But oh, there it is. You guys see how easy it was to put together Hello. like that? I love, that I love it. I love it. Wow. So go ahead. Sorry. And this is a bit hard to hold with your hands because it's it's not very it's yeah. not very rigid since this is just held together with mylar. So it's kind of difficult until you actually put it on, on something. something it's kind of like a piece of fabric it's just soft like a big piece of fabric when it's you could soft. probably if you wanted to put you think if they had like some wire or something that you wanted to stitch around the edge you could shape it if you want i to tried get that too <laughs> crafty with it yeah oh it's just a beautiful design and we're I'm thrilled with how it came out like that Yes, thank you so much. That was great. I loved it. So we're going to go through a few questions that I saved. But in the meantime, if you haven't yet, um, go ahead and comment hashtag allbrands because I'll give a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card um, as soon as we're done with the video. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, Judy Johnson asks, well, Allbrands is in Louisiana and Texas, but you're also in Louisiana, Rhonda. I am in St. Charles Parish in Luling. So are you close by, Judy Johnson? <laughs> I love it. 
Here's one from Robert Davis. Have you ever sewn a dragonfly with metallic thread? Have you? We had a no, couple of no, other I, dragonfly designs, but I can't I remember. I, I don't think I've sewn out any of my freestanding lace with metallic thread. Certainly, if someone wants to try that, they're welcome to it, mm -hmm. but I I don't really prefer the look of metallic thread myself, so no, I don't usually, I don't usually I think, use that. Too, with the Mylar, it's not very necessary because that gives it... It's super but, shiny. It's yeah. really, really shiny. <laughs> so, <laughs> that. so here's one from Bear Bell Peterson. Um, love realistic insects. I agree. We got a lot of insect people in our group during the spider phase. Uh, I was shocked how many people actually really like them. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, we're getting so many questions. Oh, we're getting a lot of uh, hashtag all brands. I see that. <laughs> Everybody's ready for that drawing. <laughs> oh yeah, we're getting there very soon. So I wanted to let you guys know we ha had a question. Um, about my design center. That's mm -hmm. something that, that your dream machine has mm -hmm. um, and the Stellaire has that's um, replaced the dream machine. And also the Luminaire and the newest 10 needle all have uh, my design center. And that's basically where you can go in, you can make shapes. We've done some videos with Rain that are really great. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, uh, Brother makes baby lock machines. And their version of my design center is called IQ Design. So yes, on that. Uh, let's see. And I wanted to let you guys know if you're inter if you are interested in a machine that has a nine and a half by fourteen hoop, um, Brother has just released the Stellaire to be available for online sale. So uh, we have like an advertisement for that that I have. Um, the Stellar XJ1 is now available online. Um, it has the 9.5 by 14 hoop. It has the Wi-Fi capability, so the baby monitor app. Um, actually, no, not the, not yet on that, but maybe in the future, sorry. It has the, um, the wireless transfer of designs to Scan and Cut and the uh, My Design Center and Artspira capabilities. And then this is the embroidery only version of that. Um, and that's free shipping anywhere in the United States. Um, and I believe that's just going to be for a limited time um, that Brothers allowed these two machines to be available for internet sale anywhere in the country. And next week starts our All Brands um, promotion for Brother machines over $5,000. And you can get from February 10th through the 20th, 60 months, 0% financing. Um, and to learn more about any of these machines, um, here's our locations throughout Louisiana and Texas. Also, Rhonda, I hope that you can come and see us because in May 4th, 5th, and 6th, we're going to be at the OSQE show in New Orleans, which is very close to you, at the Pontchartrain Center. And we'll be having um, Brother Grace, Bernina, and Juki there. And we'll have three classrooms full of machines with tons of education. So please um, look into that. We'd love to see you there. Um, it's run by the Original Sewing and Quilt Expo. And it's they do shows all over the country. So it's going to really, really be great. Yes, we're planning on um, popping out there. I actually have never been to a quilt show. Ah! So um, that, since it's right there, we're going to come take a ride and check it all out. I've seen lots of gorgeous quilts, you know, and they show them all online. Uh, from the Houston Quilt Fest, and some of them are just absolute works of art. They're just gorgeous, and quilting intrigues me. One day I might try to do that. <laughs> I would really like to learn. Yeah. Day, so. uh, let's see. Roy says, my daughter sells cockroach ornaments. People love their bugs. Yeah, That's don't give him any ideas. He'll have a free can and lace cockroach. <laughs> That's already on my list of things to do. The, <laughs> the same tech who originally <laughs> gave me the idea for the dragonfly told me for some reason people like cockroach mm -hmm. decorations. So <laughs> you probably have a 
a pretty good design if you made one of those. I don't think I would like it at all, <laughs> but you never know. People love the spider, so we were kind of surprised at that. Here's a question from Miss Bernard. What was the coupon code again? So for Rhonda's site, stitchintimedesigns.com, use the code ALLBRANDSVIP to save 10%. And they're already a fantastic price. My goodness. Yeah, so um, the dragonflies are already on sale, so it'll be 10% off of the sale price. So um, you'll get an additional 10% off of the price that it shows on there right now that um, is already on sale. Yeah. All right. I see somebody wants a cicada, too. We get a lot of bug requests. <laughs> ladybugs, I heard earlier. Yeah, somebody did <laughs> say a free scan and lace ladybug. Yeah. We, did, um, we almost forgot, Barbara. He made me a um, a freestanding lace crown the other day. And this is just, he hot glued this together too. And it's just 3D flowers that are made in three different pieces. And then the little vine is like heart flowers on there. He did that for Valentine's Day. And so he stitched out a bunch of the vines and hot glued them together to fit and you oh know, stuck there on there and kind of reminds me of the seventies, you know, I need some bell bottom pants and <laughs> I <laughs> love it. A beautiful flower crown. Huh? So you wear that on your head? Yes, you can wear it on your head. Aww. I probably should wear it like to the grocery store or whatever. Isn't it cute? You know, this time of year in Louisiana, Barbara, we can get by with wearing anything out and about. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Happy Mardi Gras, everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. And um, when we were talking the other day on Tuesday, I got to meet your awesome feathered friend that... <laughs> Um, is in somewhere, maybe in another room. Can you tell us about your, your sidekick? <laughs> um, you know, I could, but macaws are a lot of trouble. I don't know how much good <laughs> stuff I have to say about having, oh about God. having a macaw. She's beautiful. She's a beautiful bird. She is. I'm so proud of her. She's being good again today, Barbara. She was really good the other day when we were chatting on here and, uh, behaved herself. She kind of stayed in Jonathan's lap the whole time we were chatting and she was good. She didn't scream or bite me or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a, it, I love it. I love the, I, I just love everything that you guys create, what you're all about, that you're a family that's working together to make really cool, different, awesome things. Yeah. So. Um, I've been through digitizing classes. Jonathan has. Tabitha has, you met Tabitha before we got started. My daughter's here today and she's actually in the process of learning how also. So she got about halfway through her classes and she doesn't work with us full time yet, but she may one day um, mm -hmm. work with us full time too. Yeah. Roxanne said she used to raise golden blue macaws, but they're beautiful. Oh my gosh. Oh, we got some exactly. bird lovers in here. They're lot, we have lots of them in my group too. Very cool. Do you want him to go grab her really quick? I think it would be fun. Let's do it. All right. Let me just wash the glue off my hands first because I don't want <laughs> Moe chewing that. <laughs> okay. Well, in the meantime, let's go ahead and bring up our giveaway screen. We right. give away a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card. We have 100 entries so far. So we will pick a winner. And here's our drum roll. <laughs> Our winner is Amy Horn. Congratulations, Yay. Amy. <laughs> Congratulations, Amy. <laughs> to redeem your prize, Amy, go ahead and email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, number, um, phone number, and address, and I will get that into our system so that you can shop on our website, allbrands.com, for sewing machines, embroidery machines, sewing supplies, embroidery supplies. But for embroidery designs, go ahead and check out Rhonda's website. Yeah. They have lots of fun things over there at All Brands. Uh -huh. oh, and this is Nico. She has lots of nicknames. Jonathan calls her Moo. Um, uh -huh. 
I call her Mookie, Tabitha calls her something else, but she answers to anything that starts with an N. <laughs> so, Beautiful. I have to zoom in on her. Hi, say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> I think you can see yourself, so she's just kind of like um talking. Hey, Michelle, you're a beautiful girl. She's a girl, right? Yes. Oh wow, she you're is a girl. girl. We we Miko is 20 years old. Um, uh, Jonathan wanted her for his 10th birthday, uh, so um we got uh, Miko, and I don't remember how old she was, but she wasn't even eating completely on her own yet. So I had to hand feed her and take this bird everywhere with us for. <laughs> the first couple of months that yeah. we had her she was definitely like a big baby but, yeah um, yeah she's been with us a long time she eats lunch with us and um she loves watching the dream machine a lot of times when jonathan is testing design she's on his shoulder and she's bent over looking and watching and just i don't know why it fascinates her but she does she likes being in the sewing room with us and watching so i also like being in the sewing room too <laughs> well, I hope you come back on the show again, Rhonda and Jonathan. Thank you so much for inspiring us and letting us know about this awesome design designs that you created. I'm definitely um, really excited to see what you come up with next. Well, thank I, have, you. I have quite a list of things to, awesome. things to do, so I don't know exactly when when each of those things will come out because they each generally present their own unique set of problems that i have to solve yeah. um we posted a few pictures of freestanding lace scorpion a while back but um a scorpion's legs are much thinner compared to a tarantula so i was having trouble trying to get that to be poseable it was very very hard to get the legs to stay where you want them uh -huh. which is why we didn't actually release it so in until I have solved that issue and it works just as well as the tarantula, I don't really want to sell it and people have a really hard time actually getting it to, to do what they want it to do. Move your my hair. Stop. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your inspiration with us today. Everybody go to stitchintimedesigns.com. Check out, see what they have. Use the code all uh -huh. VIP to save 10%. And mm -hmm. We can't wait to see what you come up with next. Thank you for having us. We really enjoyed hanging out with you guys today. Same. It was a pleasure. Y'all have a great day, okay? Bye. Bye.